cleanse your flesh, cleanse your soul. Didn't just expunge the record of everything you'd ever done. His blood cleansed our conscience. Amen. So that today you and I can walk as free, liberated children of the living God without Hallelujah. shame before God or man. That's a big thing. Yeah. Hebrews 10:19. We're going to read some scripture today and talk about doctrine, but then I want you to understand how many of you born again? I know most of you are born again. You know yeah. when you came from death into life. When you were born again, the very life of God hit your spirit. And you went from being an old person falling apart to a new person who was made in the image of God spiritually as well as physically. Now, but I have one point to this message, and I hope you get it. It's that that, that life, how many of you, when you got born again, you used to cuss, but you didn't cuss no more? You don't have to admit it, but yeah, they just went out the window. How many of you, some of you were drunks. And it went out the window. Yeah, Isn't that hallelujah. wonderful? What a testimony. Hallelujah. But I want you to know is that the same life, resurrection life that hit your dead human spirit when you asked to be born again and brought resurrection life to your inner being can touch any area of, area of your life every day of your life to bring life. Um, we, we're, we've been given not just a, a ticket out of hell. As a kid, we celebrated Easter, and just knowing you weren't going to hell was really good, because I figured out I messed up at a very early age. But it's more than that. Not only have we been delivered from hell, we have been made to walk in the newness of life. If you, if you could go to Hebrews chapter 10, if you have your Bibles, it talks about the newness of life. I want to talk to you about, for a second, about why you need the Word of God. When I was a kid, I was saved. I had never read the Bible. You know why I couldn't make sense of it? I didn't really make a lot of sense of it until I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. It made, became a lot clearer. Amen. But this book is your declaration of freedom. This New Testament is your emancipation proclamation. Right. Every single one of us have been held as slaves in some area of our lives. Yeah. For me, it was depression. <clears throat> not, not, not that I'm super proud of it, but it's just the fact. And you, this word will set you free from oppression. It'll set you free from strife in your family. Okay, look at what this says. Just read this passage with me. It's so beautiful. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. When it says our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, only the blood of Jesus. In the Old Testament, you'll see Moses teaching them to sprinkle, even on their garments, the blood of the animals for the cleansing. Your conscience was sprinkled with the blood of Jesus. But there's something else that blood does. Not only does that blood cleanse, that blood brings life everywhere it goes. Yeah. And if your life is boring, all you need is more of the living God because he will never leave you in boring. Hallelujah. Yeah. The power of the blood of Jesus is to make all things new. I'd like you to say that with me. The power of the blood of Jesus is to make all things new. When Jesus saw Mary, he said, hey, let go of me. I got to go. Don't slow me down because this is the greatest day in all eternity for mankind. Now listen to why. Because all the messes they've ever made are being made new. Fresh starts are being offered. He had to go. Boy, there's no greater day than Easter because on Easter we say, what did he do? He rose from the dead. He appeared to the disciples. But he did something else. You see, on his way through, he said, I'm back. And then he went to that holy, holy of holies in heaven, put his blood there. And to this day and for eternity, yeah. that blood cries greater things than the blood of Abel. It says in Hebrews 12, 24, it's crying mercy. It's crying life. I bought their life. Hallelujah. Sometimes things are in such bad shape, you can't re re renew them. You've got to start over. And Jesus Christ was saying, I'm on my way to make a fresh start for the whole human race, anybody that's willing to listen. Look at what John said in Revelation 21.5. The Lord is speaking. He says, he who sits on the throne says, behold, I am making all things new. And he said, right for these words are faithful and true. And you say, what difference does that to me, mean to me if I'm already born again? 
I believe every one of us have certain areas in our lives that still be made, need to be made new. Because there's, there's wear and tear that comes in the soul realm in this life. Have you noticed that? Now, I'd like you to think about a little bit about new. There's something about the fragrance of new. Everybody say new. new. I've only brought, bought a brand new vehicle twice in my life. But I want to tell you something, nothing compares to the smell of new. A used, I'm going somewhere with this, hang in there. A used vehicle just doesn't smell like new. You know? God bless this congregation. They gave me money a few years ago for a new vehicle. For the first time in my life, I have leather seats. I'm driving that thing around, and I think, this is really the roots. I mean, forget it. I, the Queen England had nothing on me. I love that car. But there's some about new, even better. Can I do you one better? Yeah. When have you held? A five-day-old infant or a week-old infant can smell. If I had you close your eyes right now, if you've ever smelled a new baby, you can't get it in a bottle. I'm convinced that if they could bottle it, they'd make millions. It's been one of the best things in the world. Well, let me tell you something. When Jesus came back from the dead, he brought with him the fragrance of new life, the, the new birth. He could smell. Uh, the disciples received the Holy Spirit that day, the fragrance of new babies. That doesn't excite you, that excites me. Because I didn't need an overhaul. I needed to be new. He brought back the fresh new life of the new birth and heaven's eternal effervescence, the joyous life. Jesus brought the fresh smell of a brand new born human spirit that has never, ever been touched and tainted with sin. No selfishness. Nothing in it that says, mine, 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 mine. Hey, if it's there, he can deliver you from it again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. And just say, why do you read so much Bible? Well, I can quote the internet to you, but when was the last time Facebook really actually gave you life? Unless they were quoting the Word of God, or getting... I'm not saying you can't watch Facebook, but you need the Bible, so I'm trying to get you caught up here. For Come on. <laughs> I know I need more than I get, and I love the Word of God, because there's pressure on us. Look at 2 Corinthians 2.14. Read it with me. But thanks be to God, who always leads us in his triumph in Christ, and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Have you ever noticed that people at work who might give you a little bit of a hard time about your faith, when they're in a really hard place, they'll seek you out? You know why you smell different than the world does? And you say, are we talking to you? No, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> and you say, there is no fragrance in the spirit. Amen. There is a fragrance in the spirit. Spiritual realms. You have all the senses in the spirit that you have in the natural. The problem is we're such natural beings, we don't always pay attention. Go back to the verse before. It, it, look what it says. It says, he manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him. Your knowledge of Jesus is like a perfume that you carry on you. And you say, why are you being weird? Because... I don't know about you, but I like the smell of new. I like the smell of a new car and a new baby. Okay? Now think about this. Hallelujah. The way we live is either to live day by day in the newness of life or to let this world taint us. I want to tell you a really quick story. Because I'm not trying to be over the board spiritual, but this really happened. After my grandmother received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we hadn't even been aware of the spiritual realm very much until then. She received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and she kept saying, Denise, when I go to the charismatic prayer meetings, I smell the fragrance of the Lord. Have you ever smelled the fragrance of the Lord? And she said, that's weird. Well, have you ever heard the voice of the Lord, the still small voice in your heart talking? That's not weird. He has a voice. And I had to be honest with her. I said, Grandma, I've never smelled anything in the spirit. I said, what does it smell like? And she thought, and she said, oh, it smells like roses, but much, much better. You can't describe it. And I said, well, Grandma, if I ever smell, I'll tell you. And she went home to be with the Lord, and I still had never, I believed her because she wasn't a kook, okay? She was spirit, really spiritual, and you would call her kook, but she wasn't a kook. Now, I saw some people that call themselves spiritual that were kooks. <laughs> Does that mean that you can't be genuinely spiritual and saved? No. Jesus is very spiritual and more sane than you are. 
Okay. <laughs> all right. Somewhere. All right. So one day, long story short, grandma's in heaven. I didn't know if I'd ever smell the fragrance of the Lord. But this lady in my church, she was from Colorado, very big lady, had, wanted to go hear Joyce Meyer in Woodbridge. And she said, Denise, would you go with me? Do you remember Morgan? I can't remember the last name. They came for a few years. She said, would you go with me? And so we go up and we enter. It was a morning service. And we go into Hilton Memorial Chapel at the back. And we're just worshiping. And we're, there's not too many people around us. So I got my eyes closed. All of a sudden, somebody walked in with the most beautiful hello. I don't know what it was. It was so beautiful. And I whirled around because, you see, I don't wear perfume to this day. I just never have, never, I don't probably ever will. I don't wear perfume. But I thought, that is so beautiful. Don't tell me what it is. I'm going to wear it. It's so good. And I turned around, and all the seats were just as empty as when we walked in. And I looked up on stage, and Torres Meyer had just walked in. And I heard her tell six months later on her television program that she had gone through something so heartbreaking in her family that she told the Lord she was canceling the D.C. campaign. She said, I can't do it. And he said, Joyce, you, you know you can't do it. And she said, just to understand the sacrifice of some people in the ministry, she said, I would go back to the green room and cry my eyes out and then go out and preach and then I'd go back and cry. But that sacrifice, that sin to heaven, it was carried upon his servant. It could have been a God, all right? But was so much that when she walked in with my eyes closed, I didn't know she walked in, but I smelled the fragrance of the Lord. Lord. Now, I'm telling you that when we walk in the newness of life, in the Bible, if words mean anything, we can carry on us the fragrance of knowing him. Let's read it and see if it says that. But thanks be to God, who always leads us in his triumph in Christ, and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. And the next verse says, For ye, we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Resurrection Sunday is the celebration of God's fulfilling every covenant promise he'd ever made in the Old Testament to restore newness and freshness of life to human existence. Ezekiel 11:19 was prophetic in the New Testament. It's a real short verse, but we're going to read it. It said, I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. And I will take out the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. He took our heart. Maybe your heart, heart, your heart wasn't hard, but my heart was hard. I just have decided love doesn't really exist. Blah, blah, blah. He took our heart. Petrified, putrefied, maybe your heart wasn't putrefied, but my heart sure didn't smell like Joy smelled the day she walked out there. Hard, petrified, putrefied heart, callous by sin, and he replaced your heart with a tender, innocent smell of a newborn, a tender, sweet heart. The night that he was betrayed, Jesus spoke, and we're talking about newness, because every single one of us knows we got a new eternal destination when we got saved, headed for hell, Headed for heaven. That's important. Nothing more important than that. But everything about our lives is to be made new. And if it slips back, we get made new again. Because my point is this. The blood of Jesus that hit your heart the day you got born again is no less powerful today to save your career. If that's where you apply the blood. To say, are you following me? This is life available to us on a daily basis. And it may not always be preached, but it's available. In, in Jesus' ministry, he said that this new wine, the Holy Spirit, would be so powerful that you couldn't put it in old wineskins. Go look at Mark 2.22. He says, no one puts new wine. Who is the new wine? The Holy Spirit, right? No one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost in the skins as well. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. Jesus spoke here of the new covenant that we walk in and the fact that God's fresh, refreshing, living spirit was so powerful it couldn't go in a heart of flesh. Or I mean in a, you know, an unregenerate heart. You had to be born again. That's why he provided the new birth. 2 Corinthians 5.17, I know that this is a familiar scripture, but it says, read it with me. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If there's any part of your life, have you ever had a friendship go sour? Isn't that one of the saddest things on earth when you've walked with a friendship with somebody for a long time? 
That is something Jesus can make new. I've, I've had it happen. You just pray. He said, what do you do? You take the blood. You take a scripture and you quote the scripture. And you say, Lord, I just apply the blood of Jesus to this situation. That he's going to bring new life to something that where a misunderstanding happened. He can, hallelujah, this is exciting. I know that we think we know this verse. How many things are new. But we act like the mighty Holy Spirit that touched us the day of the new birth was big enough to take us out of death and sin. But the problems we have today, he's not able to take us out of. If you need a better job, God, God's got the power for a better God, job. God. If you've got kids that need to come back to God, God's got the power Amen. to get those rascals and put a hook in their jaw and bring them home. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus' blood is so powerful because Leviticus 17, 11 says the light is in the blood. In the Old Testament, they were strictly forbidden to just kill an animal and eat it. They had to remove it. And he said, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement. The reason that you have a right to a great life is not your track record. The reason you have a, a right to a successful and victorious life in every area of your life is the blood of Jesus who paid for your redemption. Hallelujah. There's a word that I heard Mark Hankins use in a, in a sermon. It's vivify. And I thought, well, I know that's a Spanish word. I didn't know it's an English word. It is. It's an English word. And this word means to enliven or animate, to give life to. And the Lord desires to put life, to vivify every single part of your life. Hallelujah. You know, God just does things different than we do. Amen. And he never apologizes for it. Amen. You know? You can say, well, you know, I'm stumbling along, and it's all right. It's just day after day, and I get up, and I go to work, and I keep going. That's not God's best. Right. It's not that he can love you where you are at. He's glad you're going to heaven, but God's got purpose for you. Man. God's got excitement and adventure. I've never known anybody anywhere that said yes to the whole plan of God that did not end up with an exciting life. Because God's not boring. Man. I knew that. God just does stuff different. Listen, we're having Sarah. And you show up at the clinic. And they say, now you came for a checkup, Granny. How nice. And they said, no, we came for a pregnancy test. They did. They did it a pregnancy test. When she was 90 and he was 100. Now, what's the world going to do with that? They're going to laugh all the way until her laughter turns to laughter. And she names the kid laughter. What, you? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I want to go ahead and read it. Now, number one. Do all the young people here know that I tend to favor you? We might sing one hymn, but we sing all the rest modern, right? Did we sing Eye of the Earth? Did we go for Eye of the Tiger? That was not my idea. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> so just ahead of the fact, I just want you to know, young people, that I get accused of being partial to you because I probably am, okay? So, but this is for the older folks. Because this sermon is about a blood that can give supernatural. We really ideally should not have this long a prayer list if we had an understanding. Okay, a better understanding. Yeah. I read on Charisma News. You ever check out Charisma News? It's where you can get good Christian news that you might want to know about but don't see on the regular news. I read this prophecy and it struck such a resonance in me that I printed it for myself and then I thought, oh, I know a whole lot of people that need this. So don't ask who I'm picking on. Don't say, Mildred, do you think she just picked on us? No. <laughs> A guy named Bill Young prophesied this. I hear the Father saying, I'm breaking the age barrier. Quit saying, I'm getting older. This is, I'm going to copy for everybody 45 and older. Now, I don't know when you start thinking you're old in this society, but I suspect it's 31. <laughs> I know when I was a kid, the slogan was, don't trust anybody over 30. And I'm not sure how much that's actually ever changed. Okay? So anyhow, if you are 45 and older, I have a copy of this. We'll put it on the welcome desk rather than embarrass you for hanging out. But do you know what? Not every society that's ever been has hated age the way ours does. They act like age is something to be ashamed of, and yet Proverbs doesn't treat it that way. The biblical um, the Old Testament patriarchs were treated with respect. Okay, So take heart. Listen to this prophecy. I hear the Father saying, I am breaking the age barrier. Quit saying, I'm getting older. Did you hear that? What are you supposed to quit saying? Okay, quit saying it. <laughs> Cry 
Christ in you is ageless. Allow his spirit to quicken your mortal body and soar with the eagles. And don't tell me where I can't send you this year, says the Lord. Get over yourself and buy some new luggage. Amen. <laughs> Anybody over 35 should go on a mission trip. Find that in the Bible. <laughs> a word to the kingdom's older stars. That's the headline. I sense the Lord saying, the older stars in my kingdom are going to shine brighter and do greater exploits than ever before. I sense there is a special anointing coming up on older men and women in the body of Christ. God is not through using you. Your age is not against you. It is for you. Job 12, 12 says wisdom is with the elderly and understanding comes with long life. You have more wisdom now than ever. With years come understanding. Now listen to this. The anointing is going to cause you to live longer. Many of you have not planned to live long enough. It will be, and I'm tell, I just get such a witness on this. And you say, why is it important? Because you know too much to go on to heaven when there's so many people going to hell. Right. Amen. That revelation is the most precious thing this world can have, and you need to impart it. Um, this, this anointing is going to cause you to live longer. Many of you have not planned to live long enough. It will be an anointing similar to Caleb when he reached 85 years. He said to the Lord, I'm as strong now as I was at 40, and I want to take another mountain. There is coming a spiritual fountain of youth into your midst, a renewing, a release of God's strength. Like Psalm 68 says, your God has commanded your strength. God is commanding strength in you. Your God, one translation says, your God has decided you will live strong. Hallelujah. Many of you are going to have to live longer because God is not through using you. Many of you will have a second childhood in the spirit. You will be reactivated by God to live out your dreams that you are just dreaming now. People and relatives will laugh and say, you're going to do what? And you're going to go where at your age? But that anointing is going to rise up within you to take mountains, do exploits, to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint. Our older years are when we are in our prime to be used and bring forth fruit. Psalm 9116 says, with a long life I will satisfy you. There's an anointing coming on God's people to live longer. And the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, is lengthening our days. One little, last little piece. Many have made out their wills, but before you leave, or think about leaving, check out your father's will. Amen. I don't think you're going to go anywhere for a while. As Abraham and Sarah conceived in old age, you're about to conceive and live to see an Isaac. You're impossible. Woo! Right? Hallelujah. <laughs> now, all you young people, if, if you think, well, she just ministered to the older folks. Well, the truth of the matter is, a lot of you young people have some older, but my, my kids aren't ready for me to go home. So you just agree with all this, yeah. that your moms and your dads are going to live, get yeah. saved, yeah. and do all the will of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Romans 6, 4 says that we were caused, we were brought here to walk in newness of life. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. What does newness of life mean? Newness of life is the place where God lives, and he does not remember one thing you did last week if you said you were sorry. You cannot walk in newness of life carrying around a, a list of what your spouse did or what anybody else did. That's not newness of life. That will cripple the love of God flowing through you. It will cripple your faith. If you're going to walk in newness of life, you go to that place in Philippians 3 where Paul said, one thing I do, forgetting absolutely everything. You find somebody living in the past, you found a really boring person. Sorry. Yeah. Have you ever met somebody who lived in the past? And they tell you the same stories over and over and over because that's the only thing that's real to them. If you want to live in the newness of life, what if you made some mistakes? Don't matter. Tell the Lord you're sorry, get it comes in the blood, and then go for it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Everything that we have chalked up to a one-time occurrence is actually a continual reoccurrence. Now, that doesn't mean you get born again multiple times. You only get born again once. But that life, that living life, God wants to touch your life with creativity. So many times I'll come up against something that I think is just too hard to be solved. I'll finally remember and put it before the Lord and say, what do I do with this? He's so ingenious. Yeah. He's so simple. Yeah. He just brings life just like that. But we forget that the life that brought you from death to death and the grave into heaven and life is still available. It's in the blood. Hallelujah. A couple more verses just to reinforce the fact that God is not into use. 
Yesterday is yesterday. God lives now and tomorrow. Second Peter 3.13. Read this with me. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Jesse Duplantis is a great preacher, and he was privileged to go to heaven about 30 years ago. And he asked the Lord something. He said, you know, he said, heaven is so beautiful. He says, everything there just rejuvenates by itself. If you make a mistake and step on a flower, you look down, it's not crushed. It just springs back up. There's no death there. You can't make anything die there. He said to the Lord this. He said, there's one thing I don't understand. When heaven is so beautiful right now, why in the world... Do you want to make a new heaven? Oh, he says, this one's used. We'll get a new one for my kids. I can afford it. <laughs> Every six extravagant. <laughs> now listen, if you've gotten away from the Lord, things have gone downhill. And you say, are you cursing me? No, I, what happened? You get away from the Lord. You don't realize day by day how much God's putting into your life, how much God's protecting you from, how much you're re re bouncing back from things that people say about you. Don't even matter in God. And you get away from the Lord, and it's a downward spiral, yeah. sometimes slow, sometimes fast. But I'm here to tell you today that God is into making absolutely everything new. The reason we point out that he wants a whole new heaven and a whole new earth is because he wants you to live in the fullness of life. He said, I've made a way. I came back from the grave. You see, we died with him on that cross in the mind of God. But when he walked out of that grave, we walked out with him. And we're as victorious as he is. And he wants that victory touching every single thing you've given up on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know you were called to do some kind of ministry, but it didn't work out? Hold it before God in prayer. Plead the blood over it and say, Jesus, show me what's up, okay? Amen. Isaiah 65, way in the Old Testament, he, pro he prophesied. The Lord said in the Old Testament, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. Former things will not be remembered or called to mind. When the Lord sees a rotten chair, he doesn't slap a coat of paint on it. He throws it out and starts over. Yeah. True? Yeah. All right. When he saw your spirit, he didn't even try to renovate it. That dead thing went out the door and he gave you a brand new spirit. If you, I know, there are some people who are stuck in a marriage where they say, we'll never get divorced. We can live together, but they'll never be sweet again. Find that in the Bible. Find that. Oh, I got people listening now. Let's say that. He said, behold, I make all things new. Which all things does that not include? I'll make your liver new and your pancreas Hallelujah. new Amen. and your feet new and your heart new. I make all things Amen. new. When was the last time you claimed that? And then you said, well, my soul realm got really beat up. I was talking to somebody last night. It was camera. Camera's over at our house. And we were talking about all the goofy things we did as kids with scars. And I, I told you one time on the beginning of a 28-day vacation, I was at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, and I skipped rope downhill on a gravel driveway. No, that's nuts. My dad tried to tell me in advance. Okay, so I start a vacation with no palms on my hands and no knees, just one massive scab. I'm just using this as an illustration. Think of how many things your physical body has recuperated successfully from over the years. Aren't you glad that every time you've had an operation, you don't still have an open wound? And yet I see people treating their emotions as gaping holes that God could never fix. Uh -oh. I was abused. Amen. Now, I'm not saying I'm not compassionate if you were abused, but if somebody can make all things new, they can fix that. Yeah. You can't fix that, but they can fix that. What is there in your life that you are so convinced that the devil did such a good job with it will never be fixed? Yeah. Don't you make Jesus smaller than the devil? Jesus said, I make all things new. Amen. There will be a new earth where there are no genetic mutations, spiritually, physically, or otherwise. Where there will be no injustice in the courts and no children without love. The Apostle Paul, I can't you wait for this day. We saw a movie the other night. I just want to comment on it for a minute. It's called The Apostle Paul. And it's very graphic in portraying the persecution of the early Christians. I'm not sorry we went. We went, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry for one reason. We hear, like if ISIS beheading the Christian bro brothers in Egypt, the whole group of Egyptian brothers in Africa, they wouldn't recant. 
and it doesn't hit us too hard because we don't know names and faces and sweet smiles and people we love, so we can handle it. But when you see the movie, and you see them being thrown with the lions, and we've known them from the, I'm not sorry I went, because we need to have enormous right. compassion on our brothers who are being, being persecuted around the world. For that reason, I'm fine. There were a couple of things in the movie I did have an issue with. I just want to comment on it. One is that the Apostle Paul was a massively joyous person, and they failed to capture that. And you know, I'm not saying he never had a down day, but if you read the book of Philippians, every other word is joy, joy, rejoice. I may be in prison, but I've got the joy. Amen. So I want you to understand, don't take your theology from that movie, because they missed it in a couple places. Now I don't know where I was. Okay, we'll get there in a minute. Well, I know what it was. We're going to read in Revelation 21, where John got to see the... And I just wish, it's hard to see people martyred, but do you know how martyred on the class? When I was raising my kids, I taught them this. God wants you to have a long life, and God will heal you. But know this, there is not one promise in all the scriptures where you are promised not to be martyred. And you say, why would you tell your children that? Because if it ever came to that, I don't want them to deny Jesus for their physical life. Physical death lasts this long. Eternal is for eternity. Heaven is for eternity. And the one thing, one thing, there are two things about the movie I wish they'd captured better, but I still am glad I went. I'm not, okay. One was the joy of the Apostle Paul. He was a very joyful person because he knew Jesus so well. His joy came from within, but he was yeah. joyful. The other thing is, is at the end, and they did kind of capture some of the martyrs came back and loved on Paul as he was martyred and everything, but they didn't capture the unutterable joy of heaven. It says that we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We have that joy now, and the joy to come is beyond imagination, where there are no injustices. Look at, read this with me, what John the Beloved said. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there's no longer any sea. God wants to take the parts of your life that you think need a new coat of paint and just start over. Yeah. Yeah. You say, well, I don't have any ministry at all. I guarantee you, whether you're 20, 25, or 80, God has a ministry for you. Yeah. I'm always... I'm always trying to convince my mom, and she's getting it now. She's in assisted living, a beautiful assisted living in Lake Wells, Florida. And I said, Mommy, you've got two ministries, actually. The, the nurses love her. They love on her. She loves on them. And that's a, anytime you can make somebody day better and they feel valued, that's... And the other, she prays. When I got something I can't just let the whole church know about the needs prayer, she, my mom will pray with me. My dad always did that, too. You have a ministry no matter what your age is. But if you're breathing oxygen, God's got something for you to do. Amen. All right, let's see if we can wrap this up. Almost done. When you invited the Lord into your heart and his blood hit your dead spirit, your heart rose to newness of life. And just as the physical body has healed from many cuts and bruises over the decades that you've lived, when his blood hits our bruised and beat up emotions, we can be whole again emotionally. We don't have to live broken. The other thing is that he said he would give you supernatural strength. It's really easy as you get older to talk about aches and pains and whatever, but look at Isaiah 40, verse 31. He said, they that wait upon the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles, run and not get tired, they will walk. Isn't that a huge promise? That means as far as you've got to go, you're going to walk and not get weary. How? Through the newness of life. Hallelujah. You don't have to be old to receive this message. But young people, I'll tell you, the sooner you learn about the supernatural power of God, the happier you'll be. Because, for example, I know you think you will never be 60. But, how many of you that are over 45 thought you'd never be over 45? I just couldn't have it to me. The more you understand that life is a moment-by-moment -moment thing, not a one-time thing back when you got born again. Thank God for what he did that day, but you've got needs this day. If you need to repent, for goodness sakes, don't go out of here without repenting. You need to get right with God, get right with God. You don't have to be old to receive this over-the-top life and love of God. But if you are, you, you still can receive it. The Holy Spirit is not intimidated by 55, 65, 75, or up. And you say, why are you saying that? Because a whole lot of people will say, well, the government said I could retire. I'm retired. What are you going to say to the people that lived around you if they're being drug off to hell and you don't try to tell them? you got a job to do. 
Yeah. You've got an intercessory prayer job to do. You've got a witnessing job to do. You've got a job of service to do. Every single one of us has something that God's asking us to do. Yeah. Jesus' resurrection from death, hell, and the grave is also our resurrection. When he came out of the tomb, we came out. And I know we, there's just scriptures everywhere. One of my favorites is Romans 8, 11, in the same spirit. What is a part of your life you think that couldn't be touched and helped? It says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. We're going to wrap it around by going back to where we started in John chapter 20. Can everybody see that God likes new? Anybody else here like new? There's yeah. something nice about new. I told you my mom was in assisted living. We called her to wish her a happy Easter yesterday morning because our Easter's are so busy. And she says, oh, I'm down in some or other place, and we're having an Easter celebration. And not only are the kids having an egg hunt, but they brought in rabbit, bunnies. And I said, oh, a rabbit. No, no, not a rabbit. Little tiny bunnies. And I got to pet them. No, what is Yeah, I know. I was going to get a bunch of pictures. Um, it doesn't matter which animal. If you got a tiger cub, you'd all go, oh. <laughs> or if you could smell any of them, you'd go, oh, there's something about new. Yeah. And you say, what was the point? Listen. There's part of your life that needs to be completely new. Not overhaul, not a paint job. Thrown out and started over. Yeah. If you're confused about the Word of God, you need to set aside your understanding of the Word of God. Get the Bible up and start listing scriptures. This scripture, I'd hang my head on. Do, are you making, is that making sense? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back to John 20, 21 to 22. Jesus, this is the day after he's gone up and presented his blood, that evening he appears to them and he said to them, Peace be with you as the Father sent me, I also send you. Then look at the next verse. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Every time you can get Jesus Christ to breathe on any problem you have. Here's what I see as a pastor. Sometimes people just get stuck. Yeah. And sometimes when you're, you know, if you've been stuck in the snow, you need more than you to push you out. You need a whole bunch of people to push that, that vehicle in the snow. Sometimes when you get stuck, you just say, well, the devil settles forever, so I guess it's forever, and you don't even try to get unstuck. This, when he said, receive the Holy Spirit, that's when they were born again. You know, it wasn't when they received the, the baptism, because that's, Luke talks about that in the next chapter, Acts chapter 1 and two, Acts chapter 2. If you've been born again, that's awesome, but there's also a second experience called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit. Let's notice this, though. I might as well teach us since we're here. You receive the Holy Spirit at the new birth. This is when they got born again. Same Holy Spirit. But you receive an overflow of power in the baptism, and it will change your life. I could, have, I could call dozens of people up here to tell you exactly how it changed their life, all for the better. Right. Now, here's my point. When he said... Receive the Holy Spirit. Which Holy Spirit is that? Is that the same Holy Spirit that created the heavens and the earth? Is that the same Holy Spirit that hit Jesus dead like the Spirit in body and raised him up? Every day of your life, you can go into the presence of God and say, Oh, Lord Jesus, breathe on me. And you say, Why don't we walk in the newness of life if it's available? It's a connection problem. <laughs> Because, now listen, this is not rude. I'm just telling you. He stands at the door and knocks. And it's written to believers. Read Revelation chapter 3. It's written to believers. Paul, you know, John to the churches and Ephesus and, you know, all those places. And it says he stands at the door patiently tomorrow morning. Like to have some fellowship? Want to talk? Anything you need? I'm just glad he keeps knocking. Because yeah. I put him off more than a day or two sometimes. But I'm telling you, if we're not living in the newness of life in every area of our life, it's a connection problem. It is a matter of saying every single day that I live, you just look at your life. What I do is this, okay? Every morning when I get up to have prayer, I think one of my biggest concerns, my two biggest concerns, oh, besides like health concerns of the church, we're like, and I get in the presence of the Lord, and I read the word and feed my faith, and I worship him. And you say, does it take time? Yeah, it takes time. It doesn't have to take three hours. No. 30 minutes is a good starting place. I, you can do it in 10. You can get farther in 30. Okay. And you say, it's not worth that much of my time. Hey, it's better than sitting in a lawyer's office because somebody sued you and you're trying to... Yeah. Yeah. 
I take the worst problem I got and I said, Lord, this is, this is what I'm facing. I don't know. I'm stuck here. I don't know what to do about it. And I pray about it. And I pray the spirit about it. And I've never had a problem that failed to yield when I did that. Because it's just like you're holding your problem and you and say, Jesus, would you breathe on this, please? I'm stuck. And I know good and well as I speak to you right now, by the Spirit of God, I know there's some people here who are stuck. But I'm here to tell you that the same one who in the first place brought you from death into life, he's got four-wheel drive. He will get you unstuck. He will send as many people that you need. You do not have to be the rest of your life. You do not have to have a dull marriage the rest of your life. Are you following me? Let's see if there's anything else. I do want to read it. Let's... It's 10 till, I know, I should stop. Last, we're still, it's right here in John. The place I went to, John 20, 19 to 20. This happened the same day. So when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, peace be with you. And then the next two verses, he breathed on them. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. A little farther down in the chapter, it says this. Thomas wasn't there. Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not there when Jesus came. So the other disciples said, were saying to him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see, this in his hands being printed of the nails, unless I feel, put my finger into the place of nails, put my hand into his side, I will not believe. How many of you are with Thomas in that you have never seen the Lord? I have never seen the Lord. I've heard his voice. I've heard his voice. Smell this fragrance. Okay. That means that you have the same choice to make right. that Thomas made. And you said, well, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in Jesus. I, I understand that. I'm not worried about your salvation, although we'll give you a chance to get saved if you're not saved. I'm here about you enjoying everything he paid for. Right. Newness of life in every area of your life. And to do that, you're going to have to not be a Thomas, yeah. but believe before you see. The battle that you face, I don't care who's here, I can call every single one of you up. Tell me your worst problem. And to every single one of you, I would say you are in a faith battle. And you say, how do you know that? Because Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. It's the only fight. You're not to be in a fight with your spouse. You're not to be in a fight with your kids or the school board or anybody. Fight the good fight of faith. Okay, so let's see how Thomas does. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside. And Thomas said with them, Jesus came. And the doors hadn't been shut, stood in their midst and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, reach here your finger and see my hands. Reach here your hand and put it into my side and don't be unbelieving but believing. Did you ever have the Lord just show up in a way that you didn't deserve because you were not believing and that you prayed? Yeah. And, and how many of you had not be better to you than your faith deserved? Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, I've seen miracles when I wasn't really expecting one. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord, my God. Jesus said, because you've seen, you believe. Blessed are those, say that with me. Blessed are those who did not see and yet believe. If you're stuck in some area of your life, I would say blessed will you be if you, if you believe before you see. You need a job, start thanking God. Pray and then start thanking God. You need a better job, pray and start thanking God. God. It's all a man. Believe before you see. And all, all I have in this message, and this is, I know I made it over and over. You understand the power of the blood to save you from hell. And the power of the blood that raised your spirit brand new in the new birth. But that same Holy Spirit and that same power is calling us to walk in newness of life where we don't take defeat and say, well, this is just something that can never be fixed because there's nothing in Jesus that can't be fixed. Amen. Amen.